Hey guys, it's Wee Viver. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at how Digital Combat Simulator or DCS World 2.5 is performing as its best with the wide field of view headsets Pimax 8K and Pimax 5K Plus combined with a desktop PC rig powered with a GDX 1080 Ti and an Intel i7 8700K processor. The last days I've spent many hours trying to find the best possible balance between performance and visual quality in DCS World 2.5, especially considering all the expectations all Pimax backers and DCS fans have on these soon to be released headsets. If you still haven't seen my in-depth Pimax 8K and Pimax 5K Plus review, I really recommend you to check it out first as it's also covering my initial benchmark results using the Pimax in Digital Combat Simulator as well as many other popular VR simulators and games. Before we begin, I would like to give a huge thanks to all my Patreon supporters and a special thanks to my official Patreon sponsors Art Armin and Commander Dark Light. So let me just begin by saying that your DCS World 2.5 experience with either Pimax 8K or the 5K Plus will depend a lot on how picky you are in the visual quality or in other words how big your expectations might be in the in-game sharpness and clarity using the Pimax headsets with high resolution panels because it can differ a lot and it all comes down to how much you really want to push the in-game settings of course. As for me, the overall image quality and especially sharpness and readability of the cockpit gauges are quite an important factor, not only because I want this simulator to look good and realistic, but mainly because I'm also never using keyboard shortcuts for the cockpit navigation. Instead, I'm using the mouse to switch all the buttons, knobs and switches directly in the virtual cockpit during my flights and combat. To be able to use the cockpit switches and buttons, you really need sharp image in the cockpit with as good clarity as possible, making readability of the gauges and text easy in flight. As I'm not really a hardcore DCS world player yet, I'm still learning the basics of every aircraft I purchase, especially my favorite jet fighter FA-18 Hornet created by Belsentech and Eagle Dynamics. Why am I even telling you this now? Before I even started off, you may wonder. Well, I need to clarify that there is a minimum acceptable image quality preset you will need to use to really enjoy DCS world on your Pimax 8K or the 5K+. Plus. Going below that preset or these individual settings might give you a rather disappointing experience to be honest. This is not only because you probably expect the Pimax to give you a sharper image with more clarity than your current VR headset can provide, but also because of the fact that too low settings or too low rendered resolution on the Pimax won't really look that good. In fact, if you go way too low on the resolution, it could look worse on your Pimax than it actually does on your Oculus Rift for example. That's of course because of the high resolution panels Pimax is using. You need to feed them with a high enough resolution to really output a sharp image without too much jagged edges in the cockpit and shimmery horizons and shimmery buildings as a result for example. As Digital Combat Simulator already is one of the most demanding VR simulators available, we need to remember that there is practically no VR headset available on the market that can run this simulator with a fully smooth 90 frames per second refresh rate, at least not without the help of motion reprojection such as the asynchronous space warp which Oculus Rift is using or the motion reprojection Windows Mixed Reality headset supports with the latest Steam VR beta versions. Well, Pimax headsets does not support motion reprojection yet and the well-known brain warp is so far only partially implemented, very similar to the asynchronous reprojection you find in SteamVR and uh, well, the motion reprojection is planned to be added soon, I hope. So while we get smooth head movements on the Pimax, on even the lowest refresh rate possible, the surroundings such as the movement and bypassing buildings and scenery overall will introduce slight stutters or judder once the frame rate is below 90 for the 5K plus or 80 on the Pimax 8K which is the maximum refresh rate of the 8K. Anyway, after several days of testing, trying out different combinations of PyTool render quality settings, field of view modes, different values of the 
the Steam VR super sampling values and also the in-game render scale slider, I have come to some conclusions that might help you out finding the best possible balance to make DCS World 2.5 both look great but also run fully acceptable on your GDX 1080 Ti or a better graphic card if you have so. And no, if you wonder about slower GPUs then no, I will not include any results using my GDX 1070 laptop as I find it impossible to enjoy DCS World on a GDX 1070, at least together with a Pimax. Already now I can tell you that a GDX 1080 Ti paired with a very good Intel processor such as the Intel i7-8700K is in my opinion the minimum requirement for this simulator using Pimax, no matter if you have the 5K Plus or the 8K. You have probably seen my full Pimax review from two weeks back, where I was testing DCS World 2.5 using a previous Pi Tool version with the Pimax headsets which gave us quite devastating results. A frame rate jumping between 30 and 35 frames per second, sometimes around 40 but mostly below 30. Well, in that test I was using PyTool at 1.0 and SteamVR super sampling at 30% only, which looked really poor and jaggy. Not only I bumped up the in-game render scale to 2.0, I started to see some more clarity, but at the cost of performance of course, where the frame rate could go even below 20 frames per second, no matter if I decrease the in-game settings to almost minimum possible. With the previous PyTool version, I would say the PyTool render quality of 1.5 was actually needed to make this cockpit in this simulator to look sharp. Luckily, Things has changed a lot since the latest PyTool 76 version, where DCS World actually looks pretty good even on PyTool render quality of 1.0, both on the 5K Plus and also the 8K, as long as you keep the in-game super sampling of between 1.2 and 1.4. Now that also gives us a significant difference in performance, going from the in-game render scale of 2.0 down to 1.4 or maybe 1.2. Besides that, the render in PyTool version 76 has some performance improvements implemented, which are actually apparent even in a GPU and CPU heavy VR simulator such as Digital Combat Simulator. The improvements might not be huge, but they are still visible at least. Furthermore, for this testing session, I also used a custom shader mod for the DCS World 2.5 found on the Eagle Dynamics community forum. The mod is made by a guy called Kegetus and it does some changes in the rendering pipeline, replacing some shaders and removing some graphical effects. The mod has support for all available Sentry models, but so far only supports a few airplane models such as the FA-18 Hornet, Vigan and also the Harrier. So this is also one of the reasons I only been using the FA-18C Hornet for today's video. The mod also has some field of view mask feature which you can use to mask off and don't render the image area which is not even visible in the VR headset. But using the Pimax 8K or the 5K Plus unfortunately this only caused some visual glitches and resulted in a very weird things happening in the wide field of view peripheral vision. So I decided to disable this mask feature in this mod and only use the shader enhancements. As for the Pimax field of view, I was mainly using normal field of view as a reference point as I think it gives me a wide enough field of view, great immersion without hitting too much of the performance as the large field of view would do actually. Whatever numbers you will see coming up in this video, a large field of view would decrease the frame rate by at least 15 or even up to 20 frames per second, so remember that. Yes, the performance hit is really huge going full field of view on the Pimax and it's still only 20 degrees of a difference, it's really not a big difference in terms of visual field of view. Going down to small field of view mode to gain some performance you will get between 5 and 10 frames per second more but personally I recommend you to stay on the normal field of view for best immersion and for the real advantage of using the Pimax headsets over any other VR headset of course. I need to add the fact that recording all my testings during the last couple of days using different resolution values and settings would have taken too much time for this video. So that's why I decided to record all captures only using my best recommended values I could find eventually and here they are what you're just seeing right now. 
Also, don't forget that recording all this footage using OBS Studio is some of the resources as well, both the GPU and the CPU resources. And after some comparisons that I made, I came to the conclusion that the, my background recordings are decreasing the in-game frame rate between 4 to 6 frames per second. So whatever numbers you see here in this video, add another 5 frames per second in average to get a more accurate reference point. So what are the optimal settings I have found, you may wonder? Well, starting off, Pytool render quality at 1.0 is more than enough now thanks to the render improvements of the latest Pytool 76 and the Steam VR super sampling should be somewhere in between 80 and 100% but not lower. For these recorded examples I was using 80% all the time. Going below 80% might introduce some more jaggedness so I would really not recommend you to go below 80% in Steam VR super sampling. The in-game render scale is set to 1.4 in this test, but if you can live with some slightly more jaggies on the cockpit gauges, you can easily go down to 1.2 even. Remember though, value 1.2 is my recommended minimum value and I would definitely not go lower because you lose a lot of clarity and text readability going below 1.2. Furthermore, you may wonder about the other in-game settings. Many of the in-game settings will not hurt your frame rate and won't help it either whenever you put them on low or on high, at least using the GTX 1080 Ti. The textures and terrain textures options are a good example and that's why I keep them on high. I use no in-game traffic as it's quite CPU demanding and I turn off the heat blur, the depth of field, the lens effect and the SSAA. I also keep the visibility range and water visuals at medium. Note that the resolution, aspect ratio and monitor option has no effect in VR so just put it as low as possible. I would stay away from using MSAA or the anti-aliasing completely as it will lower your average frame rate by at least 10 or 15 frames per second. Set anisotrophic filtering to times 2 only and keep the resolution of cockpit details to 1024 as I feel it doesn't hit the performance at all as far as I can see at least and gives you slightly better looking cockpit details. Looking at the right side options, starting off with cluttering grass, I just prefer to remove it completely as it has a huge impact of your frame rate while you are especially on the ground starting off or taking off or landing and it really is not worth it. The trees visibility I keep using between 50 and 80% depending on how low or high I'm flying as I think anything below 70 looks quite bad when you're just a few hundreds of feet above the ground. Changing the trees visibility between 50 and 80% can affect your frame rate between 2 and 6 frames per second but it also depends on what scenery you are flying. Flying in the Caucasian scenery which is, has a lot of trees you can gain up to 10 frames per second by just lowering the trees down to the lowest possible 30% but then you also will lose a lot of the visual presence as the trees really makes those hills and mountains look realistic and more good looking. Flying around the Persian Gulf map or the Nevada test and training range map you won't see much difference changing that value as we don't have much trees in that scenery module anyway. Furthermore, I keep the preload radius at around 12,000 which is more than enough. I just disable all the other options available such as terrain, object shadows, cockpit global illumination and other things I find being just unnecessary. Also, don't forget to disable V-Sync as it will lock your in-game frame rate to 60 frames per second even in VR actually. Full screen rendering doesn't practically do anything in terms of performance and the Aero interface is just only for older Windows 7 installations I assume as Windows 10 doesn't use Aero mode anymore, well as far as I know at least. For both the 8K and the 5K+, Plus, I'm using a gamma value of 1.4 which gives me more natural brightness, good blacks and nice colors in every scenario. Also, there are a few very important settings you need to change in the NVIDIA control panel before you even start up DCS World on your Pamex or any other headset for that matter. The energy saving option should always be at prefer maximum performance and the maximum pre-rendered frames in the VR should be set to 3 instead of 1 or 2 or the default application control value. Yes, 3. And you can even try 4 actually. 
And you may wonder why, and to be honest, I won't be able to explain this, but I find three pre-rendered frames in VR will give you a much more stable frame rate with much less judder and stutters in DCS World 2.5, even if the frame rate goes below 40 frames per second. The image will not be smooth at 40 frames per second, of course, but at least you will not feel that inconsistent judder, at least most of the time. So what are my final frame rate results, you may ask? Well, you see them here already in this footage we're just watching. And while they're not really breathtaking, I can at least say that it all makes DCS World 2.5 fully playable and enjoyable on the Pimax 8K and the 5K+. Plus. It won't be fully smooth as you will most likely never hit 80 frames per second on the 8K or the 90 frames per second on the 5K+, Plus. but I can tell you that going above 45 or 50 frames per second it is not bad at all in DCS world. As long as you keep it free from inconsistent judders by changing the previously mentioned pre-render value in NVIDIA control panel to 3 or even 4. I need to add that the frame rate will be very different depending on what scenery you are flying. The Caucasian scenery, which is the default one, is the least demanding one and here you will balance between 45 and 60 frames per second mostly. Especially at higher altitudes or away from the bigger cities, you won't have a big problem actually staying above 60 frames per second with a GDX 1080 Ti, which in my opinion is more than enough for a quite smooth gameplay without any issues in fast air combat. As I mentioned before, remember to add another 5 or even 7 frames per second up on the numbers you're seeing here as I'm recording this gameplay with the OBS Studio and the performance hit is around 5 frames per second in average. Again, lowering the tree's visibility to lower numbers gains you a good performance boost, but it also makes the scenery look a little bit more boring on distance, so this option is all up to you. In the middle of the action you may not care much about the trees, but while doing a free fright just enjoying the view in your lovely FA-18 Hornet, you might want to set the tree's visibility to at least 70 or 80%. The Nevada test and training range map is a tricky one, as it sometimes can give you a very good frame rate up on 70s or even higher, but flying around in Las Vegas area will definitely give you dips down to low 40s or maybe around 50 in average. Flying at higher altitudes again give you a better overall frame rate, especially in clear weather and during daytime, and in fast combat you won't be flying at low levels that much anyway. Also during evenings and nighttime you will get slightly better performance and frame rates, but overall the Nevada map has a lower average frame rate than the Caucasian map, so have that in mind when you're setting up your missions using the Pimax. The Persian Gulf map is a real beast eating your resources more than anything else, mainly because of the dense Dubai sitting buildings, airports and skyscrapers. The level of detail is just incredible in some part of, of this map, especially the bigger airports, but sometimes you may find yourself flying at 25 to 30 frames per second at low altitude, which is definitely not recommended. If you plan to do some serious air combat in the Persian Gulf, move away from the central Dubai area and the frame rate will mostly stay around 55 or 60, 65 frames per second or even higher, especially at higher altitudes. I can simply not find any settings to increase the frame rate over the Persian Gulf map, even though I'm sure there are some tweaks to be found in the config files of this simulator, maybe to decrease the amount of objects and buildings visible, well I don't know, if you have any idea, please let me know guys and I would highly appreciate your tips. All in all, I know I scared you off a lot in my previous Pimax review telling you a really nasty performance in Digital Combat Simulator together with the Pimax, and I know many of you started to wonder if the Pimax headsets really are a good option for VR flight simulators such as DCS World 2.5. But now, after the latest PyTool 76 update, and after doing some of the tweaks and settings as mentioned before, I would say you can definitely play Digital Combat Simulator on your Pimax 5K Plus or the 8K 
at least if you have a decent Intel CPU and a GDX 1080 Ti or especially the new RTX graphic cards 2080 Ti. I'm still awaiting my MSI RTX 2080 Ti Gaming S Trio to arrive as it has been heavily delayed for several weeks now, but as soon as I get it I promise to give you some updated videos about DCS World and Pimax headsets with new frame rate tests, benchmark numbers and comparisons between the 2080 Ti and the 1080 Ti. So stay tuned for a lot more Pimax coverage coming up here on Suivire. By the way, I'm using the F FPS VR application to show the frame rates and I can really recommend you to get it as it's really cheap on Steam and will give you very accurate numbers whatever headset you're using. Also you may have noticed that the CPU and GPU utilization is rather low in many scenarios flying in DCS World 2.5. I'm not sure why this happens and I have really tried everything to make this simulator use more of the GPU at least but it seems to be very common issue in VR once you go up in resolution. My GDX 1080 Ti together with my Intel i7-8700K at 4.9 GHz per core and 32GB of DDR4 RAM running at 4000 MHz should be enough to be pushed to the max. But I guess this simulator has some processing in the background that limits the rendering after all. Well, I don't know, I'm just assuming. And if you have any solution to this, please let me know and I would highly appreciate that. Also, if you wonder about which of the Pimax headsets looks best flying around in Digital Combat Simulator, either the 5K Plus or the 8K, I would say they are both very similar using these settings I just gave you with the PyTool 1.0, SteamVR Super Sampling at 80% and in-game render scale at 1.4 or 1.2. Even if the 5K Plus takes the edge in clarity and sharpness, especially around the virtual cockpit and all the gauges and text. I won't say the 8K looks much worse, but the non-native upscale resolution makes the image overall slightly less sharp, even if the screen door effect is better. Also at very far distance I can still tell you as I said before I see more defined objects and airplanes using the 8K and that's most likely because of the less limited pixel resolution and more pixels filling out the edges of the very tiny objects. But the difference is really not big and as I used to say I can highly recommend the Pimax 5K Plus as the best Pimax headset for VR gaming overall. The slight color temperature, the contrast, the black level advantage you get with the Pimax 8K makes really no noticeable difference in this simulator such as Digital Combat Simulator and in the end I feel the clarity of the cockpit using the 5K Plus gives you a bigger advantage here especially if you're using your mouse to navigate all the buttons and switches on the cockpit. So if you ask me for a definite winner here, you won't get my final conclusion. I think it's all a personal choice and while I prefer the clarity of the 5K+, I'm sure there are some serious flight simmers that will love the improved screen door effect and the more defined object at distance using the 8K. Either way, Digital Combat Simulator is definitely a great experience on the Pimax headsets giving you a wide field of view you cannot achieve with any other existing VR headset on the market. And even if we use normal field of view of around 150 degrees it's still a huge improvement in terms of immersion, feeling of speed and awareness compared to any other VR headset. Now let's hope the NVIDIA RTX GPUs can give us a huge performance boost and that we can at least get up to 60 or 70 frames per second stable in all scenarios and all scenery models which would be really awesome and more than enough. I promise once I get my RTX 2080 Ti I will let you know all about it so don't forget to subscribe to my channel, leave a like on this video and stay tuned for much more Pimax and DCS World 2.5 content coming up here on Sweeviver. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you found this video somewhat helpful and interesting. If you appreciate my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon and I will forever be thankful. A big thanks to all my lovely Patreons and of course a very special thanks to my official sponsors Commander Darklight and Art Armin. You're really helping me out a lot. Thank you guys. Have a lovely day and see you in my next video. Cheers!